Welcome to NICU Essentials Lecture Series. Today, we will be talking about neonatal hypoglycemia, a common condition in both the NICU and newborn nursery. In today's lecture, we will be going over glucose physiology and homeostasis, the transitional hypoglycemia that occurs in newborns, differential diagnosis, risk factors, criteria, diagnostic evaluation, and management. In utero, glucose is transferred from the mother to the fetus across the placenta by a facilitated diffusion. It should be noted that maternal insulin does not cross the placenta. After birth, the continuous supply of glucose provided by the mother ceases, and neonates need to regulate their own insulin concentrations. This is why it may be normal to see lower blood glucose values in the first 24 to 48 hours after birth. The newborn brain is dependent on a constant supply of glucose. The healthy newborn requires a higher GIR compared to adults due to proportionally larger brain to body mass ratios. In a state of prolonged starvation, the liver plays an important role in homeostasis by producing ketone bodies which the brain may use. However, liver glycogen stores are rapidly depleted after birth. This diagram illustrates the complex pathway that is involved in glucose homeostasis. ATP production is maintained by glycolysis, glycogenolysis, and amino acids. It can be expected for newborn glucose concentrations to decline within the first two to three hours after birth. Transitional hypoglycemia describes infants who are inefficient at producing ketones, have lower amounts of fatty acid to utilize, such as small for gestational age infants, hyperinsulinemic, such as infants of diabetic mothers, large for gestational age infants or post-dates infants, and infants who inappropriately retain liver glycogen stores such as in metabolic diseases. Neonatal hypoglycemia occurs in up to 10% of healthy newborns. The AAP definition defines hypoglycemia within the first four hours of life as less than 40. Hypoglycemia between the first four to 24 hours of life is defined by a blood glucose less than 45. This reflects the decline in serum glucose that normally occurs after the first two to three hours after birth. In contrast, the Pediatric Endocrine Society defines hypoglycemia within the first 48 hours as a blood glucose less than 50 and hypoglycemia as less than 60 beyond 48 hours. We will be focusing on the AAP definition in this lecture, but it is important to realize that generally, after 48 hours after birth, blood glucoses should be greater than 60, as defined by the Pediatric Endocrine Society. Prematurity is a large risk factor for having hypoglycemia. Low hepatic glycogen stores inadequate muscle stores, and inadequate lipid stores are all reasons why hypoglycemia frequently occurs in premature infants. Infants of diabetic mothers who have hyperinsulinism have inappropriate secretion of insulin, which puts them at risk as well. Small for gestational age infants have inadequate glycogen stores and substrates for gluconeogenesis, similar to premature infants. Finally, 
inborn errors of metabolism, sepsis, pituitary disorders, cortisol, and growth hormone deficiency should be considered in cases of refractory hypoglycemia. The following table provides a comprehensive list of the various causes of neonatal hypoglycemia. By far, the most common causes are prematurity, small for gestational age infants, and infants of diabetic mothers. However, it is important to keep in mind the following causes in your differential diagnosis. Symptoms of hypoglycemia are classified into neurogenic signs due to the activation of the sympathetic nervous system and neuroglycopenic signs due to deprivation of glucose. These include sweating, pallor, temperature instability, irritability, hunger, jitteriness, tachycardia, and vomiting. The late signs of glucose deprivation include apnea, hypotonia, high-pitched cry, seizures, and even coma. Hypoglycemia screening is performed in any term or late preterm who is symptomatic. In addition, large for gestational age and infants of diabetic mothers are screened for 12 hours, while small for gestational age and preterm infants are screened for 24 hours. Screening is done by a rapid point of care testing with confirmation by plasma sample if a low blood glucose value is noted. It is important to note that higher hematocrits often produce lower blood glucose measurements. This is often why polycythemic infants can also have hypoglycemia. If hypoglycemia is confirmed in an infant, it is important to assess risk factors for the infant, such as gestational age, size of the infant, maternal history, polycythemia, sepsis risk factors, and history of perinatal stress. If hypoglycemia is refractory to treatment, consider further laboratory workup to assess for inborn errors of metabolism or other endocrinological diseases. Newborns with risk factors for hypoglycemia should receive oral feedings within one hour after birth. Mothers who are breastfeeding should be seen by lactation consultants to determine the amount of milk supply and to assess latch of the infant. If an infant is less than four hours old and has a confirmed hypoglycemia that is less than 25, the infant should be given IV dextrose. If the glucose is between 25 to 40, the infant may feed and the glucose should be reassessed 30 minutes later. If an infant is between 4 to 24 hours of life and the glucose is less than 35, the infant should be given IV dextrose. If the glucose is between 35 to 45, again, the infant may refeed and be reassessed in 30 minutes. It is important to note that if at any time any infant is symptomatic, then the infant should be immediately treated with IV dextrose regardless of glucose value. The following algorithm reviews the hypoglycemia treatment protocol as described. This algorithm is also included in your resident code cards for easy reference. If treatment is refractory to refeeding and IV dextrose, other medications to consider include glucocorticoids, glucagon, as well as octreotide. At this point, the patient should be transferred to the NICU and further laboratory workup, as mentioned before, should be completed to look for other causes of hypoglycemia.